Welcome to a journey into the mystical realms, where mythical creatures from ancient cultures reign supreme. These beings, woven from the threads of human imagination and folklore, have captivated hearts and minds, symbolizing the fears, hopes, and dreams of civilizations long gone. First on the list is the Adana bird, a mythical creature from Philippine folklore, is renowned for its healing powers and the enchanting songs it sings. According to legend, the Adana bird's songs can cure any ailment, but capturing it is a perilous venture filled with challenges and trials. The tale of the Adana bird is a prominent part of the Philippine epic poem Ibong Adana, dating back to the 17th century during the Spanish occupation of the Philippines. This bird is not only a symbol of elusive beauty and magic, but also represents the quest for redemption, healing, and the transformative power of forgiveness. The story encapsulates themes of adventure, familial bonds, and the pursuit of redemption, echoing the values and struggles of the Filipino people throughout history. Next is the Kraken, a mythological beast feared by sailors and seafarers throughout history, is said to dwell off the coasts of Norway and Greenland. Its legend dates back to the 13th century, rooted in Norse mythology and maritime lore. The Kraken's immense size and fearsome appearance, often described as a giant octopus or squid, made it a symbol of the dangers lurking in the uncharted waters of the world. Maritime tales of the Kraken describe it as capable of dragging whole ships into the abyss, its tentacles strong enough to crush the wooden hulls as easily as one might snap a twig. Next is the Golem, a mythical creature from Jewish folklore, is a symbol of protection and the manifestation of the community's collective will to defend the innocent. The most famous golem story originates from the late 16th century in Prague, where it was said to have been created by Rabbi Judah Lou ben Bezalel to protect the Jewish community from persecution. Crafted from clay and brought to life through mystical rituals and the inscription of the Hebrew word for truth, emet on its forehead, the golem served as a guardian of the Jewish people, a powerful ally against their oppressors. Over time, however, the golem's strength became a source of concern as its inability to discern right from wrong led to unintended destruction. To deactivate the golem, the letter Aleph was removed from the word Emet to form Met, meaning death, thus returning the golem to inanimate clay. Next is the Kitsuna, a figure of great significance in Japanese folklore, embodies the complexity of nature and the spirit world. Regarded as intelligent beings possessing magical abilities, these mythical foxes are often depicted as shapeshifters, capable of transforming into humans to interact with the world. The number of tales a kitsune has, up to nine, indicates its age, wisdom and power. Kitsunes are also seen as messengers of Inari, the Shinto deity of rice, fertility and prosperity, further enhancing their revered status in Japanese culture. The dual nature of the Kitsune reflects its role as both guardian and trickster. While some tales tell of Kitsunis using their abilities to protect and guide humans, others depict them as mischievous or malevolent, using their powers to deceive and manipulate. Next is the Rock, a legendary bird of enormous size and strength, originates from the diverse collection of Middle Eastern and Islamic mythology, notably making appearances in the tales of One Thousand and One Nights, this mythical creature is often described as having the ability to carry off and devour fully grown elephants, showcasing its unparalleled might and predatory prowess. The rock's legend was likely inspired by encounters with real birds of prey, magnified through the lens of travelers' tales and the human propensity for storytelling. It represents the awe and fear that the natural world can inspire in us, a reminder of the times when humanity lived in closer harmony with the wild and the creatures within it were both revered and feared. Next is the Quetzalcoatl, whose name means feathered serpent in the Nahuatl language, is one of the most important gods in the ancient Mesoamerican pantheon. Revered by cultures such as the Aztecs, Toltecs, and Mayans, Quetzalcoatl is a symbol of creation, fertility, wisdom, and the harmonization of opposites. This deity is associated with the wind, the dawn, the planet Venus, and the arts and knowledge. Legends tell of Quetzalcoatl as a bringer of corn to mankind, a teacher of crafts, and a guide for the spiritual journey, emphasizing the cultural and moral advancement of society. Quetzalcoatl's myth 
represents death and rebirth, seen in the cycle of the planet Venus as the morning and evening star and the battle between light and darkness. It's tied to prophecies of the Spanish arrival, illustrating myth and history's role in shaping cultures. Next is the Heracles, perhaps the most celebrated hero in Greek mythology, was born to Zeus and Alcmene, making him both mortal and divine. His life was marked by extraordinary feats and grave challenges, instigated by Hera's jealousy of Zeus's infidelities. The twelve labors of Heracles, imposed on him as penance for a crime induced by Hera's machinations, are among the most famous myths, symbolizing the human struggle against formidable obstacles and the pursuit of atonement and honor. Heracles' labors took him across the known world and beyond, pitting him against monstrous beasts, daunting tasks, and the whims of gods and men. Each labor showcased Heracles' strength, wit, and perseverance, leading to his divine status on Mount Olympus, symbolizing heroism's transformative power and the path to immortality through valor. Next is the Selkies, mythological beings capable of transforming from seals into humans by shedding their skins, occupy a unique place in the folklore of Scotland, Ireland, and the Nordic countries. These creatures symbolize the untamed spirit of nature and the deep intrinsic yearning for freedom and one's true essence. The most heartfelt tales of the Selkies speak of their sealskins being hidden by a human who wishes to keep the Selkie as their spouse, unaware or indifferent to the profound sadness and longing for the sea that consumes the creature. The story culminates as the Selkie finds its hidden skin, reclaiming freedom and identity. It highlights love, loss, and the struggle between personal desires and societal expectations, underscoring the importance of authenticity and the transformative power of love. Next is the Swan Maidens are mythical creatures who live as swans in the wild, only to transform into human women by removing their magical feathered skins. Found in the folklore of various cultures, including Slavic, Germanic, and Asian traditions, these beings represent purity, beauty, and the innate desire for freedom. The myth typically unfolds with a hunter or a prince who, upon discovering the swan maidens, becomes enchanted by their beauty and steals one of their swan skins, preventing one maiden from returning to her swan form and compelling her into marriage. This union, born out of fascination and possession, often leads to a tale of love, loss, and the yearning for freedom. Next is the Minotaur, born to Queen Pasiphae of Crete, as a result of King Minos's hubris and defiance of the gods, is a figure of ancient Greek mythology that embodies the themes of punishment, isolation, and the longing for redemption. Confined to the labyrinth designed by Daedalus, the Minotaur is fed a tribute of Athenian youths every seven years, a grim reminder of the cost of Minos's pride and the gods' wrath. This tale reaches its climax with the arrival of Theseus, the Athenian hero who, with the help of Ariadne, Minos's daughter, navigates the labyrinth, confronts the Minotaur, and ultimately slays the creature. The death of the Minotaur, while a moment of triumph for Theseus, is also a moment of liberation for the Minotaur, freeing him from his cursed existence and the cycle of sacrifice and sorrow. Next is the Barghest, is a legendary spectral hound found in Northern English folklore, particularly associated with Yorkshire. This mythical creature is often described as a large black dog with glowing eyes, sharp teeth, and sometimes the ability to change size or become invisible. The Barghest is said to roam the desolate moors and the winding streets of old towns, its appearance heralding death or misfortune to those who encounter it. Tales of the Barghest are steeped in the rich oral traditions of the region, serving as cautionary tales that speak to the universal human experience of confronting the unknown and the inevitability of death. Next is the Grim Reaper, often depicted as a skeletal figure in a dark cloak wielding a scythe, is a symbol of death that has permeated various cultures and epochs, evolving from ancient beliefs into a universally recognized icon of the end of life. This figure's origins can be traced back to the Middle Ages, a time when Europe was ravaged by plagues and war, which profoundly shaped the collective consciousness regarding death and the afterlife. The scythe represents death's equality, harvesting souls regardless of status. The cloak adds mystery, emphasizing death's unpredictable nature. Next is the Sphinx, an iconic figure in mythological tradition, boasts a lineage that spans from the ancient civilizations of Egypt to the myths of Greece and beyond. 
In its Egyptian incarnation, the Sphinx is a benevolent guardian, often depicted as a male with a lion's body and a human head, representing strength, wisdom and royal power. The Great Sphinx of Giza, standing sentinel by the pyramids, is perhaps the most famous embodiment of this aspect, symbolizing the pharaoh's role as protector of his people and the mysteries of the afterlife. Conversely, the Greek Sphinx, posing riddles to Thebes' entrance and devouring failures, is defeated by Oedipus, symbolizing wisdom over divine caprice, but heralding his downfall, underscoring knowledge, power, and hubris. Next is the Leviathan, a creature of ancient myth and religious lore, occupies a prominent place in the collective imagination as the embodiment of the sea's untamed and monstrous power. Originating from the Hebrew Bible and later adopted into Christian and Islamic texts, the Leviathan is often described as a massive sea serpent or dragon, ruling the ocean's depths and symbolizing chaos, strength, and the challenge to divine authority. In Jewish tradition, the Leviathan is depicted as part of the creation narrative, a creature so vast and powerful that only the Creator could tame it. It represents nature's chaos tamed by divine will, symbolizing cosmic order and balance. In medieval symbolism, Leviathan warned against envy, pride and sin, underscoring the struggle between good and evil. Next is the Zmei Gorinik, a legendary dragon in Slavic mythology, occupies a prominent place in the folklore of Eastern Europe, embodying the contrasting aspects of destruction and wisdom. Unlike the singularly malevolent dragons of Western lore, the Zmei Gorinik often possesses a nuanced character, capable of both devastating acts and providing guidance or assistance to those deemed worthy. Traditionally depicted as a serpent-like creature with three heads, the Zmei Gorinik's breath can either be a life-giving force or a fiery inferno, depending on the tales told. Its stories highlight heroism, featuring battles where Slavic heroes, like Dobrynja Nikitic, defeat dragons using wisdom and bravery. Next is the Mothman, a legendary creature said to inhabit the area around Point Pleasant, West Virginia. First came to public attention in the 1960s. Described as a large, winged humanoid with glowing red eyes, the Mothman became associated with the tragic collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, leading to widespread speculation that its appearances were an omen of impending disaster. Unlike the ancient mythological creatures rooted in traditional folklore, the Mothman is a product of contemporary myth-making, reflecting modern anxieties and the fascination with the paranormal. Its story has been fueled by eyewitness accounts, media coverage, and the interplay of local lore and popular culture, becoming a fixture in the landscape of American urban legends. Next is the Thunderbird, a legendary figure in the mythology of various Native American tribes, is revered as a powerful spirit, a controller of the weather, and a guardian of the earth. This magnificent bird is said to be capable of creating thunder with the flap of its wings and lightning with the blink of its eyes, embodying the elemental power of storms and the life-giving rains they bring. Tales of the Thunderbird are rich with symbolism and meaning, reflecting the deep respect and reverence for the natural world inherent in Native American cultures. The Thunderbird is often depicted as a protector battling malevolent spirits and monsters to ensure the safety and prosperity of the people. Its story is interwoven with the cycles of nature, the balance of ecosystems and the interconnectedness of all living things. Next is the Owl of Athena, a creature revered in Greek mythology, is intrinsically linked to Athena, the goddess of wisdom, courage and warfare. This association between the Owl and wisdom stems from ancient beliefs attributing to the Owl the ability to see what others cannot to pierce the veil of darkness and to discern truths hidden from the ordinary sight. The owl's presence alongside Athena symbolizes not only wisdom, but also vigilance and the ability to navigate and foresee the complexities of life and combat. In the mythology and art of ancient Greece, the owl of Athena is often depicted as perched on her shoulder or flying beside her, serving as her sacred bird and a protective emblem for the city of Athens and its people. The owl's image was even struck on the reverse side of the tetradrachm, a silver coin of ancient Athens, symbolizing the city's prosperity under the protection of Athena and her wise companion. Next is the salamander, in the lore of European alchemy and medieval mythology, is often depicted as an elemental creature associated with fire. Contrary to its biological counterparts, 
The mythical salamander is believed to thrive in flames, embodying the element's indomitable spirit and regenerative powers. This unique creature became a potent symbol in alchemical texts, representing the process of calcination and the enduring nature of the soul, which, like the salamander, emerges purified from the trials of fire. The legend of the salamander invites contemplation on the dual nature of fire, as both a destructive force and a source of light, warmth, and transformation. In the alchemical tradition, the salamander's ability to withstand and be reborn from the flames serves as a metaphor for the spiritual and physical purification that is a central theme in the quest for enlightenment and the philosopher's stone. Next is the new, a mythical creature from Japanese folklore is often described as a harbinger of disaster, its appearance closely associated with calamity and ill fortune. This creature of the night is said to possess the ability to conjure dark clouds and bring about storms, further cementing its reputation as an ominous figure. Despite its fearsome reputation, the new remains a creature of mystery, rarely seen and often spoken of in hushed tones. The tale of the new reaches a climax in the story of Emperor Konoe in the Heian period, where a new's haunting presence and nightly cries over the imperial palace were believed to be the cause of the emperor's ill health. It was the legendary samurai Minamoto no Yorimasa who finally vanquished the Nui, shooting it down with an arrow and subsequently restoring peace and health to the emperor. The slain Nu was then set adrift in a boat on the Sea of Japan, further adding to its legend as a spectral being not of this world. Next is the White Stag, has been a potent symbol in mythology and folklore, appearing in the legends of many cultures as an omen, a guide, or a guardian of sacred knowledge. In European mythologies, the White Stag often leads hunters on a chase beyond the boundaries of the known world, guiding them into realms of deep forest where the veil between the natural and the supernatural is thin. Such quests usually signify moments of transformation, challenging the pursuer to transcend their limitations and to embark on a journey of self-discovery and spiritual awakening. In Hungarian mythology, the White Stag symbolizes guidance and destiny, leading Hunar and Magor to their future homeland and connecting them to their spiritual lineage. Next is the Alkanost, according to Slavic mythology, is a creature of profound ambiguity and mystical power. Named after the Greek mythological figure Alcyone, transformed by the gods into a kingfisher, the Alkanost has evolved in Slavic tales to represent themes of hope, sorrow, and the transcendent escape from worldly suffering. The bird is often associated with paradise and is believed to lay its eggs on a beach before casting them into the sea, where they endure tempests and emerge as storms a metaphor for the tumultuous journey from despair to renewal. Legends of the Alkanost explore the dichotomy between the ephemeral joy brought by its song and the potential peril of losing oneself entirely to its enchantment, suggesting a meditation on the nature of happiness and the cost of forgetting one's duties and griefs. Next is the Manticore, whose name derives from the Persian Mardkor meaning man-eater, is a creature of formidable strength and ferocity first introduced to Greek literature by Ctesias, a Persian court physician. This mythical beast is described as having a voice that melds the sounds of a trumpet and a flute, a chilling melody that contrasts sharply with its deadly nature. The manticore's unique appearance and attributes have made it a subject of fascination and fear, embodying the perilous aspects of the natural world and the monsters that lurk in the human imagination. In the lore surrounding the manticore, it's depicted as devouring victims whole, emphasizing themes of consumption and the cycle of life and death. Next is the Bennu bird, often linked to the phoenix of Greek mythology, is a powerful symbol in ancient Egyptian culture, embodying the mysteries of life, death, and rebirth. Described as a heron with a two-feathered crest or as a creature with luminous red and golden plumage, the Bennu is said to have played a pivotal role in the creation of the world. It is associated with the sun god Ra and is believed to have flown over the waters of chaos at the beginning of time, landing on a rock to proclaim the creation of the world. The Bennu's name is related to the Egyptian verb Veben, meaning to rise or to shine, a reference to its role as a harbinger of the dawn and a symbol of resurrection. The bird's myth captures its rebirth from ashes, similar to the phoenix, symbolizing life cycles, renewal and resistance against chaos. Next is the Kirin, 
known in Japanese and Korean mythology as well as in Chinese lore, where it's referred to as Kilin, is a mythical creature that represents the highest virtues of benevolence, good fortune, and wise leadership. Unlike many mythological beasts known for their ferocity, the Kirin is celebrated for its gentle disposition, appearing only in places ruled by a wise and just leader, or to signify the birth or death of a sage or illustrious ruler. The Kirin's appearance is often interpreted as an omen of prosperity and peace, embodying harmony between humanity and nature and the balance of elemental forces. It is said that the Kirin can walk on grass without disturbing a single blade and navigate through water without creating a ripple, emphasizing its gentle nature and its role in maintaining the balance and purity of the natural world. Next is the Yatagarasu, a mythical three-legged crow, holds a profound place in Japanese folklore and Shinto belief, symbolizing divine guidance and intervention. This celestial creature is said to represent the will of the sun goddess, Amaterasu, guiding mortals in their moments of greatest need. The most famous tale of the Yatagarasu tells of its role in leading Emperor Jimmu, the legendary first emperor of Japan, through treacherous mountain terrain to establish a new dynasty, exemplifying its status as a harbinger of success and the embodiment of heavenly support. In addition to its guidance, the Yatagarasu is revered as a symbol of rebirth and rejuvenation, akin to the cycle of the sun rising each day. Its three legs are often interpreted as a triadic symbol of creation, preservation, and destruction, mirroring the transient nature of existence and the eternal cycle of life and death governed by divine forces. Next is the Makara, a mythical sea creature of Hindu and Buddhist mythology, holds significant symbolic weight as a representation of the water element and as a vehicle of the sea god Varuna and the river goddess Ganga. Its depiction varies across cultures and artistic representations, but it consistently embodies the power and mystery of the ocean, serving as a symbol of life's origins and the primordial chaos from which the universe was born. In Buddhist symbolism, the Makara is often seen adorning temple gates and archways, signifying its role as a protector and as a threshold guardian that wards off evil spirits. Its presence in religious art and architecture conveys themes of protection, fertility, and the profound mysteries that lie beyond the material world. Next is the Sirens in Greek mythology are figures of great ambiguity and complexity. Originally depicted as beings with the body of a bird and the head of a woman, they evolved through mythic traditions to sometimes be portrayed with human form, their song remaining their most defining and dangerous attribute. Daughters of the river god Achilles and a muse, the sirens were said to dwell on islands in the sea, from where their enchanting music would lure sailors to shipwreck on the rocky coast. Their legend is most famously linked to the epic journey of Odysseus, as recounted in Homer's Odyssey. Forewarned by Circe, Odysseus orders his men to plug their ears with beeswax and has himself tied to the mast, so he might hear the siren's song without succumbing to its spell. This encounter epitomizes the themes of temptation, knowledge, and the human struggle to navigate the perilous seas of desire and curiosity without losing oneself. Next is the Cat Seath, in Scottish folklore, is a mythical creature resembling a large black cat with a white spot on its chest. Legends tell of the Cat Sith walking the highlands, both feared and revered, believed to possess the power to steal a deceased person's soul before it could pass on to the afterlife. During Samhain, a Gaelic festival marking the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter, families would leave offerings to appease the Cat Sith, hoping to ensure the safe passage of their loved one's spirits. Some tales suggest the Cat Sith was not merely a cat, but a witch that could transform into a cat nine times. This transformation gives it layers of symbolism associated with change, witchcraft, and the sacred number nine. Next is the Naga, in Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain traditions, occupies a prominent place as a creature of great significance, often depicted as a gigantic snake or serpent with the ability to assume human form. These divine beings are associated with water bodies, rivers, lakes, seas, and the underworld, serving as custodians of treasures, guardians of the natural world, and vehicles for the deities. The Naga's mythology is filled with tales of their interactions with gods and humans, often highlighting their protective instincts, their capacity for wrath, and their pivotal role in various cosmic events. In many stories, 
Nagas are revered for granting water and fertility, essential for crops and well-being, but feared for causing floods, storms and droughts, showcasing their control over vital forces and the consequences of disrespect. Next is the Simurg, rooted in ancient Persian mythology, is often depicted as a large, magnificent bird with a long, peacock-like tail and the claws of a lion. Its name, derived from the Pahlavi words sen, an expression for thirty, and mer, meaning bird, can be interpreted as thirty birds, or the bird of thirty, symbolizing its encompassing wisdom and the many lives it has lived. The Saimug is said to reside atop the tree of life, nesting in its branches, which are believed to hold the seeds of every plant that has ever existed. Tales of the Simur highlight its role in guiding and protecting heroes like Zal, imparting crucial knowledge for journeys. The Simurg's feathers are said to possess healing properties, and its presence alone inspires awe and reverence, embodying the interconnectedness of all living beings and the cycles that govern the natural world. Next is the griffin, with its head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion, has been a symbol of majesty and strength since ancient times, appearing in the mythologies of cultures from the Middle East to the Mediterranean. This mythical creature combines the king of the beasts with the king of the birds, symbolizing mastery over both the earth and the sky, and serving as a powerful emblem of divine authority and protection. In ancient myths, griffins were believed to guard priceless treasures and were seen as fierce opponents of those who would seek to usurp divine or natural order. Their nests were said to be found near gold veins, and they were fiercely protective of their young and their domain. The griffin's dual nature also made it a symbol of duality within the universe, embodying the unity and balance of opposing forces and the embodiment of justice and retribution. Next is the basilisk, often referred to as the king of serpents, is a creature of medieval legend and lore, steeped in the art of alchemy and the dark recesses of the human psyche. Said to be hatched from a serpent's egg, incubated by a rooster, the basilisk's very birth is a symbol of unnatural union and the harbinger of its malevolent nature. Its gaze is reputed to kill or petrify, and its venom is so potent that it leaves a trail of death, withering the earth and poisoning the waters. Beyond its fearsome qualities, the basilisk also represents the dual nature of creation and destruction. Alchemical texts often depict the basilisk as a creature to be conquered or transcended, symbolizing the purification process and the transformation of the base into the divine. Next is the chimera, originating from Greek mythology, is a symbol of hybridity and unnatural combination, an offspring of Typhon and Echidna, and a sibling to such monsters as Cerberus and the Lernian Hydra. Its very existence challenges the boundaries between species, embodying the fears and fascinations of the ancient Greeks with the unknown and the monstrous. The Chimera's breath of fire and its formidable strength made it a creature to be both feared and marveled at, representing the volatile and destructive forces of nature that could be neither tamed nor fully understood. The tale of the Chimera reaches its climax with the hero Bellerophon, who, mounted on the winged horse Pegasus, confronts and slays the beast, symbolizing order over chaos and courage over fear. Next is the Wendigo, is a creature born from the lore of the First Nations in the northeastern part of North America, representing a complex interplay of cultural fears, moral lessons, and the challenges posed by the natural environment. Described as a malevolent, cannibalistic spirit that could possess humans and drive them to unspeakable acts, the Wendigo is often depicted as a monstrous being, emaciated from hunger, with an insatiable appetite for human flesh. The myth of the Wendigo highlights the perils of greed and the loss of humanity, symbolizing how adversity can distort the human spirit and warning against consuming others, both literally and figuratively. These narratives remind us of imagination's power to transform fear into wisdom and connect us across time and space. The realm of myth, filled with untold stories, invites continuous exploration and curiosity, like share and subscribe if you're eager to explore more of mythology's enigmas. Together, let's keep the stories alive, finding truths hidden within myths and witnessing new beginnings in every conclusion.